because of Billy Frank. God bless each and every one of you. And God bless Billy Frank Jr. Osiem da dubs. It's a great honor to introduce our next speaker, Senator Patty Murray, senior senator from Washington State. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm so honored in joining all of you in remembering Billy. First, I want to say to Billy's sons how much we all loved your father and how inspirational it is to watch you carry on his legacy. All of our thoughts and prayers are with you and all of your family this week. You know, throughout each of our lives, we encounter people and from time to time, and only if we are lucky enough, we meet and get to know people who are just larger than life. They're the people who have so much personality, so much ability, and so much passion and love in their hearts that it's hard to believe that it can be contained in just one person. They're the people who don't just make an argument. They hold a fish in. They build a movement. They don't just raise their voices to be heard. They bang down the doors in state capitals and national capitals until they've had their say. And they do not flinch in the face of opposition, regardless of whether it's intolerance or arrest or abuse. Billy was one of those people. All of you here know the battles he fought, the causes he championed, and the legacies he simply would not let fade away. And so we all grieve and try to think about how to move forward without this larger-than-life man. And I know that while we've lost Billy, so much of his life's work truly remains with all of us. And maybe more than anything else, that is what made Billy so special. All that he accomplished all that he achieved, whether it was power and influence or court decisions and new laws, it was never about him. It was always about his community, his tribe, and protecting treaty rights for all Native Americans. <laughs> Billy was someone who did so much and worked so hard, not so that he could gain power or wealth, but so that the people, the land, and the fish that he cared so much for would not be lost or brushed aside or forgotten. That is a rare thing. And because he was truly larger than life, it will now take all of us, everyone in this room and everyone Billy fought for, to carry on the work that he started. His life's work wasn't a job for one man or one woman, but somehow he pulled it off himself. So now, we all need to fight for the tribes who call Washington State home. Over the years, I have probably talked with Billy hundreds of times, but I will never forget one of our last conversations earlier this year. Congress had just passed our annual appropriations bill, and Billy, you know, told me what to do. So I called him with the good news about funding for salmon recovery. And true to form, Billy immediately put me on his speakerphone in the car with a few of his friends. And when I told them the news, all I could hear was Billy and his friends screaming in celebration and mixing in a few words that I can't repeat here. <laughs> That's the Billy I'll remember, full of fight, full of joy and full of life. So I won't say it quite like he might, might have, but darn it, Billy, we're going to miss you. It's an incredible honor to introduce the second senator from the state of Washington, Maria Cantwell. But before I do, I know Billy would never forgive me if I didn't point out that she beat Slade Gordon.
Sugar, Tanu, and Willie, thank you for sharing your father with us. You were his source of courage and strength, and so our deepest sympathies go to you. To all of Indian country, my deepest sympathies. I know Billy is here in spirit, and if he were to talk, his spirit were to talk, he'd say, Dag Nabbit, are we really going to have all those speakers? <laughs> and I would say to him, yes, Billy, it takes more than 20 people to speak about and eulogize the courage that it took to stand up for the basic rights that were guaranteed by our government and constitution, but yet were neglected by a society in prejudice, and you fought to restore them. Yes, it takes a thousand people. So we're going to be talking about Billy Frank for a long time, farther than today. And I want you to know, as a member of the Senate Indian Affairs Committee, when I meet tribes from all over the nation and I say, I'm from the state of Washington, the next words that come out of their mouth is, ah, Billy Frank. That's because everybody all over the United States understood and knew what Billy Frank had fought for. I personally loved Billy's sense of humor. You know, he once said, quote, I believe in dreams, and that's why I don't stay mad for too long, end quote. He laughed about being in jail with what he called bank robbers because he said they asked him why he was there, and he said, fishing. That same sense of humor showed up in my office when I had requested, at my request, to switch offices to a new building in the Dirksen office in which one of my predecessors had occupied, and there probably wasn't a policy issue in which I agreed with this person. So I asked Billy if he would mind coming to do a blessing. Billy obliged, but I had no idea when he arrived that doing a blessing, particularly in a post-9-11 world where every package and envelope was suspicious, would require walking through the office with burning sage and doing various chants. When I told Billy I was worried that maybe security might come upstairs and we might have a problem, he said, you mean what, get arrested? <laughs> he said, getting arrested, that's something I know how to do well. <laughs> and that was Billy. I often wondered, how did this young boy from a small house on the Nisqually get so much courage and turn into such a Pacific Northwest hero? You heard a lot about it today, obviously, from his father. And in a book that was written about Billy's life, it said about Willie Frank Sr. that he recalled a warden telling him, your treaty rights aren't worth the paper it's printed on. But Billy, facing all of that, forged a resiliency to fight and to stand up and to keep the fishing claims that were promised in the Medicine Creek Treaty. So while he might been arrested at the age of 14, I guarantee you, maybe that's where he learned all those swear words, because he was going to persist. And so he is a legend that has walked among us. He's an environmental leader, a, sampion, a salmon champion, one of the most important civil rights leaders in our history, a man whose name belongs in the books next to Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez, Chief Joseph, and Tecumseh. But it's beyond Bolt, because Billy challenged and championed many things. 
He made sure that the environmental restoration of Puget Sound, including the Nisqually Delta restoration. He made sure that the system reconnected the floodplains of Puget Sound, increasing the potential for marshlands in Puget Sound by 50%. He made sure we had a Puget Sound partnership with tribal and partnerships in making sure everyone worked together. We wouldn't have the Timber Fish Wildlife Agreement without Billy Frank because he knew that getting an agreement was the way to get things done and protect the fish bearing streams in upland watersheds. That was Billy Frank. He knew how to get things done. Robert Kennedy spoke of courage and he said, quote, few will have the greatness to bend history itself, but each of us can work to change a small portion of events. It is from these numberless diverse acts of courage and beliefs that human history is shaped. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lots of others or strikes out against an injustice, he brings forth a tiny ripple of hope, crossing each other from millions of different directions, building a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and injustice, end quote. Robert Kennedy was talking about the life of Billy Frank because he changed events and he changed history. So Billy, today we remember you and we remember the fight, and future generations will strive to carry on your work.